For nearly 10 years, I've covered the Neptunia franchise on handheld consoles. From producing Perfection and Rebirth 1 all the way to Mega Dimension coming to the Switch. But out of all of the games I've played, I have the fondest memories of Rebirth 2. The game centered around the CPU candidates and a story that parodies the state of handheld consoles. So it was great to hear that Nepgear was getting another game. I originally played this on the Steam Deck and now it's available for Nintendo's hybrid console. Let's dive right in. Here is my review of Neptunia Sisters vs. Sisters for the Nintendo Switch. When it comes to story, this takes place sometime after the events of Mega Dimension Neptunia V2. Neptune and the other main CPUs go on a trip to the PC continent while Nepgear and the other candidates investigate a strange laboratory getting trapped within it for two years. After they're rescued, they find the world in chaos at the hands of obsession over the mobile R phones and trendy outbreaks. A clear parody of people becoming too obsessed over smartphones and involved in trending topics on social media. It is then up to Nepgear and the other candidates to find out who's responsible for these outbreaks and put a stop to it. Now as a story, I like this game. It's great to be seen as a sort of follow up to Rebirth 2, though I wouldn't throw it up there among the best of the series. It's got fun comedy and a lot of the new character designs are really good, especially with Maho and Onri being representations of phone apps in both Apple and Android smartphones. The story beats here just don't give as much charm or time with its new characters like most of the other games did. There's also a bit of controversy over whether or not this is quote unquote mainline series or canon. The developers have mentioned this as being a sort of spin-off game, but then again, when you look at games like Kingdom Hearts or Metal Gear Solid, that doesn't mean a whole lot. So if you're wondering if this is a separate universe, this game's story deliberately mentions the events of Rebirth 2, Rebirth 3, and Mega Dimension V2. So it's clear Compile Heart meant for this to be in the same timeline as the other main series games. Whether that makes it a mainline game or not is up for you to decide. It's also worth noting that this game has an English dub, marking the feature's return after the San Rencagra crossover only featured Japanese audio. Though it does feel a little restrictive. It's normal for these games to only have key scenes dubbed in English, but it feels like there are a lot fewer dub scenes in this game than others. Many important scenes will continue to another transition where one transition has a dub and the second doesn't. When it comes to gameplay, this is a 3D action RPG with light crafting elements. As you trek through it, you will traverse dungeons and fight monsters in real-time combat. To start things off, with the Switch, we have exclusive content and early unlocks. First of all, New Game Plus bonuses are awarded to Switch owners from the get-go. You can go into photo mode right away and use the playable versions of Shanghai Alice and Higarashi right at the beginning of the game. The Switch version also gives you playable versions of Onri and Maho, the two new characters heavily involved in the story. As of right now, PC, PlayStation, and Xbox all don't have access to them. You can only play as these characters on Nintendo Switch. And just because I know many of you are going to ask, Yes, the quote-unquote censorship of this game's story is still here. The lines where they rewrote curse words into others is still here on the Switch. But to be perfectly honest, I find this a non-issue. This isn't even censoring sexual fan service like the debate normally calls for. It's just making the dialogue to have less curse words. Now for main progression. This is similar to other Neptunia games. You have a point-and-click world map going to towns and dungeons for story scenes that point you to certain areas. The towns have places to explore and shops to buy from, though this game does allow you to actually walk through many of the towns in 3D, especially Planetune that has turned into a large collection of 3D environments. We also have some new features with how side missions work. You can access Chirper, this game's version of Twitter, on the main menu, and in each chapter you'll gain access to new side missions that you can accept and do. Thankfully, you don't need to do these for shares and unlocking new story objectives, so these are just for optional items and scouts if you want to develop disc accessories for little buffs. The real changes here are with dungeons and combat. You now have a three character party that all run through dungeons together and combat is now real time instead of the older turn based system from the Rebirth and Mega Dimension games. Dungeons are large areas like mazes where you explore around to find switches and solve puzzles to unlock doors and get to where you need to go. This is normally as simple as just hitting a switch and opening a door, though a few of the dungeons do have you doing some little puzzles. Though I would say the variety in dungeons is a bit lacking. Many of these are recycled from Mega Dimension, which isn't uncommon for these games, but I feel there aren't a lot of different biomes you can navigate through here. 
But let's get into the combat. This is fully real-time action RPG stuff. Once you spark an encounter, you can freely wander the battlefield and use stored AP to use your combo attacks. From Napgear's close quarter sword slashes to most everyone else's ranged attacks, like Uni's guns and Alice's Toho-inspired magic bullets. You also build up energy to be able to use special skills or use items, similar to the ATB system from the Final Fantasy VII Remake. The key thing here is that you're supposed to constantly switch playable characters. Fight as Napgear, and when she runs out of AP, swap to someone else and keep that flow going so you never have to stop fighting to recharge and take hits. We also have HDD transformation still here for higher stats and shortcuts for moves to use on the fly outside of just your equipped combo. This is a good system, though it feels a bit clunky with delays between moving and starting combo attacks. It works, but you can definitely tell through the lack of flow that this was their first outing with this new combat mechanic. Now, once you win battles, you gain experience, level up, and can gain new combos to equip to your characters. The only problem I have with this is the results screen for battle makes things go so fast on the side of the screen, it's like a real-time thing and is only up for a few seconds. That means you only have a few seconds to see who got new skills and what those skills are called. Otherwise, you have to go into the main menu and see if there's anything in their list that you don't recognize. Now, as far as difficulty goes, since this is a new system, it's pretty easy. When you're in the first dungeon or two, it'll seem difficult, but once you learn to swap characters to keep the pressure on with attacks, it becomes very doable, and as long as you always buy new equipment when it becomes available in each chapter, you're never going to have to stop and grind for levels, especially if you use the New Game Plus characters. Shanghai Alice, the new character based on the Toho Project Bullet Hell games, is especially overpowered when you get her good weapons and fire off all of those magic bullets. Now overall, I find this game to be a lot of fun. Once I got the combat system down, it was great to jump into a fight, unleash a barrage of bullets and magic, and annihilate anything and everything that came my way. It's not quite as fluid and polished as the old turn-based system, but it's not a bad start. So, let's go into content and length. I would call this one of the shorter entries of the RPG franchise. I managed to clear this game after playing for around 18 hours. You can get more time out of different endings and such, but I gauge this just a bit under what you'd normally spend on a Neptunia RPG. That brings us to presentation, which is a big surprise. This game looks really good. It uses a new graphical engine and the models look fantastic. The shadows have a bit of a jagged edge to them, but the actual renders are smooth and pretty much flawless. Performance is also very surprising. I expected this game to be Frame Drop City with three party members running around the field all at once and no way to turn off shadows but it's really smooth for pretty much the entire game. The main issue here isn't the frame rate, but more delays when starting and ending combat. You get pretty much instant transitions on PlayStation and PC, while the Switch has little delays, similar to what the Atelier series does on the Switch. Once you're in battle, though, it runs well. Next up is Battery Life, which is pretty good. Neptunia Sisters gives the original and light models a range of about three to four and a half hours, while the V2 and OLED models get five and a half to six hours. In conclusion, Napgear is returned to both the franchise and handhelds in this more action-oriented RPG that's sort of a sequel to the story beats started in Rebirth 2. Now on the downside, the new combat system is a bit clunky in how attacks and chains work, and there are some delays and fidgety issues with transitions in and out of battle. But if you can deal with a few delays here and there, this is a pretty good Neptunia game and way better optimized than I was expecting. Plus, it is currently the only way to play as Henri and Maho. Reviews to go rates Neptunia Sisters vs. Sisters for the Nintendo Switch a 7.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.